This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about the recent Bitcoin halving and the spam attack that we're currently enduring on Bitcoin. At block 840,000 yesterday, the block subsidy got halved from 6.25 Bitcoin to 3.125 Bitcoin. A mining pool or a miner still gets to collect transaction fees for every block that they win. So it's not correct to say that the miner reward got cut in half, only the block subsidy got cut in half from 6.25 to 3.125 Bitcoin. The miner reward for those who are new to the channel is two different parts. It's the block subsidy, which is now 3.125 Bitcoin, plus transaction fees for every transaction included in that block. And this is very important to notice, especially as the block subsidy gets lower over time. So in the winning block yesterday at block 840,000, which was the first block that had that had the halved block subsidy, the total fees were 37.626 Bitcoin. That's about $2.4 million. And then the block subsidy of 3.125 brought the total to 40.751 or approximately $2.6 million dollars that went to the winning uh the winning miner which was via btc which is essentially a chinese mining pool now transaction fees are set by supply and demand block space is limited and you only get a block every 10 minutes for example demand for that block space goes up or down over time so the block space the supply is limited demand for that block space goes up and down over time it sounds a little bit like bitcoin doesn't it with bitcoin's maximum supply and then fluctuating demand but in this case we're talking about block space as demand moves higher because there's a fixed amount of block space transaction fees move higher as well and vice versa as demand falls off transaction fees ratchet back down now transaction fees have been higher in i think every single block since the halving yesterday they've been higher than the block subsidy of 3.125 bitcoin if we take a look at a recent block here we can see that the total fees were 4.8 bitcoin while the block subsidy is only 3.125 bitcoin so transaction fees are, are comprising now most or more than half of the minor compensation. Now, what we've been seeing as well is we've been seeing very, very high transaction fees. These got up to, I believe, uh, well, here's a block, block 840,027 uh, that got up to 26,000 uh, sats per V-byte. I believe there are some transactions in the halving block that got up into the millions of sats per V-byte. Someone paid uh, approximately $500,000 for a transaction. We can see fees are still extremely high. So if you have a Bitcoin UTXO that is worth more than $52, it's impossible or very, very difficult to get it into the next block. You basically have a stranded UTXO, as we've been talking about for months on this channel. Now, blocks are full and transaction fees are very high, not because there was sudden legitimate demand for block space, not because there are lots of people who suddenly want to move their Bitcoin into cold storage or spend it on chain for goods and services. This is not something that just flipped right at the halving yesterday. Blocks are full of spam and transaction fees have ratcheted higher because crypto VCs and their companies have been spamming the chain with their latest SOB, their latest ship coins built on Bitcoin, this time called runes, very similar to BRC20 tokens, but, but put in a slightly different part of the transaction. These use the op return as I understand it. So if we go to mempool.space and we click the mempool.space goggles and we select all the transactions from a recent block that uses op return, we can see all of these are these runes, spam, uh, spam transactions. They contributed, uh, this made the median fee for this block a thousand sats per V byte. So you needed to um, be sending UTXOs essentially higher than uh, $89 worth. And the total fees here were 11 Bitcoin versus 3.125 for the block subsidy. So this is, we can see very clearly what's happening here. This is not people using the chain for legitimate monetary purposes. This is crypto VCs spamming the chain with their garbage. Now, is it wrong to call these transactions spam? Some people say it's wrong to call these transactions spam since these transactions have followed all the consensus rules and paid transaction fees to be included in a block. But I would say, I would counter, isn't this what email and phone call spammers do as well? They each pay their telecommunication fees, call centers, etc. They all follow the protocol rules. So email and phone spammers, they don't violate any consensus rules either. In fact, they follow the consensus rules so well that their phone calls and emails are routed to us whether we want them to be 
or not. But we still recognize that they're spammers because it's very clear that their emails and phone, and phone calls are garbage. They're not things that we want to receive. And in fact, they bloat our inboxes and cause a lot of problems. Now, the same is true for these non-monetary uses of Bitcoin. There's nothing ambiguous about them. They're very easy to spot because they're often paying fees that are much higher than the amount of money, than the amount of sats they're sending. The very tragic thing, which I hate to harp on it, but the very tragic thing is that we have major Bitcoiners like David Bailey of Bitcoin Magazine helping to support these attacks on Bitcoin through the investment, the VC arm of his company, which is called UTXO management, UTXO management, why we're funding audio expansion into runes. This is a company, this is a venture fund with, I believe, two funds, and they're using it to support ship coins on Bitcoin. And in the process, driving transaction fees very high, along with other crypto VCs who are engaging in the same thing. But we would expect better from our Bitcoiners. We shouldn't expect them to be acting like crypto VCs. So the ironic thing is while people were watching the Bitcoin magazine, Bitcoin having live stream, this, the blockchain was being spammed by the very same owner, David Bailey, through his other companies. The Bitcoin magazine folks have this argument that they're keeping uh, they're saving Bitcoin by keeping transaction fees high and helping to compensate the miners after the fall on the block subsidy, as well as bring about Bitcoin adoption by bringing newcomers to Bitcoin. But newcomers to Bitcoin who enter ship coins on Bitcoin are not having good experiences. This was from Bitcoin Belly. So much for attracting, quote unquote, attracting the new people to Bitcoin. Here's Nate Alex saying early feedback is that I'm screwed. I hate Bitcoin now. So this is the 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 side effect of crypto scammers and spammers getting their way. They're hurting real people. Will the VC crypto spammers run out of money at some point? Yes, they will certainly. Uh, even they can't spend. They can't afford to spend five hundred thousand or a million dollars per block in transaction fees. But here's a problem. What would happen if a nation state decided to spam the chain like this indefinitely? We're getting a little bit of a foretaste of what that would look like. And what it looks like is it's very difficult to transact on the chain. You have to stay on the Lightning Network to get anything done. And if you get a Lightning channel open or close, it's going to make a transaction on the base layer that could hurt, uh, that could be very large relative to the amount of funds in the channel. So this has ripple effects. This is definitely an attack vector on Bitcoin. Obviously, Bitcoin hasn't died from this. It's a temporary inconvenience. If you happen to live or have uh, UTXOs that are very, very small, it is basically wiping out your wealth. And this is part of the problem. But the really big question is what would happen if a nation state decided to spam the chain like this indefinitely? They've definitely got the money printers to do this forever. At that point, you have to ask yourself how many Bitcoiners would be in favor of filtering out these non-monetary transactions. And I would say, don't worry, there's been wide discussion of this online, so I'm not giving the government any idea that they didn't already have. It's very important that a lot of people realize what attack vectors are, how they might work. And a nation state spam attack on Bitcoin, I think the only group that would make be made happy by that, at least just in the short term, would be Bitcoin miners, but virtually no one else, not the node operators and not regular plebs. Now, Bitcoin is a permissionless ledger but its greatest use case is as a ledger for monetary activities, not a platform for spammers and VC scammers. The discussion, this discussion about filtering transactions on Bitcoin, it's a highly complicated and nuanced one. There's a lot of emotion behind it on both sides, but it's definitely, I think, a conversation that needs to be had. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.